Yankees meet the Toronto Blue Jays. Pitching for the Yankees, Jim Abbott. And on the mound for Toronto, Todd Stottlemyre. The Yankees and the Blue Jays have a beautiful afternoon for baseball as they wrap up this three game series in Toronto. Yesterday, the Blue Jays handed the Yankees their second straight defeat here at the Sky Dome, three to one. A base hit by Devon White in the seventh inning. Made it a three to one contest. The Yankees battled back in the eighth inning. Had a threat with two men on and one out when Mike Stanley grounded into the double play. The double play ball thrown by Mike Timlin as the Blue Jays hang on to defeat the Yankees three to one. So the Blue Jays now have a seven and a half game lead on both the Orioles and the Yankees. The Yankees, a percentage point back of Baltimore, running third. Hi again, everyone, and welcome to an afternoon of Yankee baseball. The Yankees and the Blue Jays wrapping up this three game series. For the Yankees, they are attempting to avoid a sweep. And for the Blue Jays, they are attempting to clinch their fifth American League's Eastern Division title. They have done it most recently on great pitching. They've won 12 of their last 13, and through that span, their starting pitching ERA has been 2.37. Really nothing new for Cito Gaston, who's trying to win his fourth division crown in five years. Cito among the leaders all time. As a matter of fact, he sits atop that manager's list when it comes to winning percentage in September. Earlier in the day, Tony Kubek talked with the Toronto manager. All right, thanks, Dwayne. Cito, uh, your team has had its ups and downs a good part of this season. All of a sudden, you appear to be pay playing at your peak. Why did it take you so long? Well, I think what happened, Tony, is that we finally got pitching and hitting together. And you know yourself, if you can do that, you can win some ball games. And most of the season, we had uh, a lot of offense and uh, no pitching. Although uh, 10 games we lost, we had seven uh, well pitched ball game and no offense. But uh, finally, we're getting it together. Did it have anything to do with losing so many players during the offseason and having to get so many new people in, like Molitor and all the rest? Well, as far as I pitched, we certainly lost some. Uh, uh, good pitchers and for us Jimmy Key along with Hankey and of course Cohn uh, so that hurt a bit but uh, bringing in Molitor and uh, he's done a great job here he's just absolutely outstanding and I feel like we killed uh, two birds from one stone and we don't have to see him on the other side anymore. Does it concern you that people are critical of you in the media up here and other places that you're too low key and you don't make enough moves? <laughs> well I think there's enough pressure out there on the ball players and in the clubhouse that uh, I think uh, I learned when I was a hitting instructor uh, the kind of mood that I come to the park in is kind of the way that the hitters used to hit and I think the kind of mood that I display around here is the kind of mood I hope my guys can stay in stay and relax and go out and have some fun and not worry about everything not put a lot of pressure on themselves so you know you can win one way or the other so if you're too low key or you're too high strung uh, someone's going to criticize you. Yes or no is this a better team than last year at this point. Uh, as far as the offense it is but uh, pitching we will still like him a little bit. Cito thanks good luck. Thank you. Dwayne. All right thank you Tony and while the Yankees attempt to avoid being swept here the Blue Jays looking for a victory and the Baltimore Ball Club playing host to the Detroit Tigers. They're down in the third inning five to nothing of the first game of their doubleheader. Jim Abbott against Todd Stottlemyre and we'll be back following this. in Toronto the Yankees will be facing Todd Stottlemyre who has been pitching very well as of late 11 and 10 overall with an earned run average of 4.56 and the Yankees will send Wade Boggs up there to start this game against the 28 year old right hander the pitch is too low this game underway Boggs hitting 302 on the year he had a double in yesterday's game and scored the only Yankee run. There's a strike, says Al Clark, running the count to one and one. 
Todd Stottlemyre coming off a 3 nothing complete game shutout. Along with the, all the other pitchers, he is kicked in here at the right time. Foul out of play. A ball, two strikes. Stottlemyre against the Yankees this year is 2-1. and one. And overall in this recent stretch, three straight victories. He's won five of his last six decisions. He's ahead in the count to Wade Boggs, who rolls this one foul. Above everything else, the Yankees do not want, on this day, the Blue Jays sprinkling champagne on their grave. They are trying at all costs to try and avoid having the Blue Jays clinch it against them. Stottlemyre shaking off a sign. Now he's set. And he misses on the inside part. Todd Stottlemyre is a little bit better in control of his breaking ball lately. He's throwing his curveball well, and when he misses his curveball, he backs it right up with a slider. Pitch he can control a little bit better. So if you miss with a curveball, you look for a fastball, the slider's going to get you. And Boggs is out on strikes to strike this one. Wade Boggs, the first out, is going to bring Deion James to the plate. Todd really lets this one go. You do not ordinarily see Wade go out of the strike zone upstairs. Tried to check, went too far, says Al Clark. So he goes with a four-seamer and runs away and Wade can't check. And here's James. James at 333 for the year. With that soft pitch in for a strike. Playing the Yankees and Buck Schulte with that last-minute lineup change also. Yeah, originally Paul O'Neill in the lineup. But he's been scratched. Nothing in two. A couple of off-speed pitches. Here's that 7-11 lineup. James followed by Mattingly and Tarnable. Noakes hitting fifth with Larritz in right field in the place of O'Neill. Bernie Williams, Mike Gallego, and Pat Kelly completing the Yankee lineup. Paul tried to cut it out, and probably by playing, he re-injured the elbow and now has to sit. One ball, two strikes. Remember when uh, Paul took extra batting practice before it was determined that he could play. Gene Monahan, the head trainer, came out, and after he saw the elbow and the bruise and the swelling, he said, that is one tough man. I don't think there's any way as sensitive as that was that he could play. And Paul Battle had got a base in the breaking ball, but he couldn't pull the trigger on hard stuff. And even today, when he was initially in the lineup, tried to give it a go, and the condition was pretty much the same, but he just tried to force his way in there. A scratch at the last moment. Throwing hard. Two balls, two strikes, and when he can throw that hard and give you that off-speed stuff, that curveball that he's been so effective with, as you mentioned, it's made all the difference for him in this latest stretch. Ball three. A full count. At times, that has been Todd Stottlemyre's problem. Overthrowing, not hitting his spots. Full house here in Toronto. And there's ball four. The Blue Jays closing out their regular season, the home portion of their schedule. They'll hit the road for the final week following this one. They've already gone over the four million mark. And these fans watching this one and keeping an eye on the Detroit Baltimore doubleheader and you talked in your opening about how the pitching has gotten better their offense we forget about how much better their defense has gotten we've seen that the last couple of days this uh, Toronto defense doesn't lead in feeling percentage but I believe they get to more baseballs defensively than any other team in the American League they shortchange you on the number of outs you're supposed to get you're supposed to get 27 and the way they play up the middle especially boy the count on Don Mattingly. Don drove in the Yankee run with a base hit in the eighth inning. There he goes. goes. James, boy, did he have a jump as oh. Mattingly fouled it out of play down the left side. James could have only.
almost gone in standing up at second base. He had such a jump. And that's been something the opposition has been able to do against Stottlemyre recently and throughout most of this year. I think they're perfect off in this year in steals, aren't they? Well, they're nine of their last nine. Mm -hmm. And 21 of 28 all year long. Ball the other way. You know, and I don't know this, but it may be something that Galen Cisco, the uh, pitching coach, uh, talked to Todd about. Todd's a terrific athlete, good fielder. He's a good hitter. In fact, the pitchers hit, uh, just like his dad. But you know, they may have said, "Hey, look, there's Galen Cisco. You, you're paying attention to that run over there. You keep throwing over, and you're shortening your delivery home, and you're losing your stuff." So then they say, "Look, don't ignore him completely, but pay less attention to him and focus on the man with the bat." Base hit up the middle for Mattingly. James will make the turn, but stop at second. So on the single into center, the Yankees have met at first and second with one out. It's the one thing the Yankees are lacking in, the ability to go first and third. And when you play the Blue Jays with Devon White in center field, or even Ricky in left and Carter in right, because of their quickness, they get two balls quicker, especially on the turf, and they're going to prevent you going first to third or scoring from second at times. Danny Tartable. Tartable still with 96 runs batted in. Takes one too low for a ball. Danny trying to get to that 100 mark. He has 30 home runs. Hitting 249 overall. This one is too low. Yankees have not had a hitter. 30 home runs and drive in 100 runs since Mattingly did it in 1987. That's the year Mattingly drove in 115 runs. Just one of the reasons, along with very shaky pitching, where they were losing 90 games there for a while. Off the plate. So the count goes to three balls, no strikes to Tartable. And Pat Borders goes to the mound. Have a quick chat with Stottlemyre. So far to James when he walked him on the three and two he walked him on a curve ball. He got behind Danny Tartable two and oh he threw him a breaking ball. So the, apparently Galen Cisco sent the word out. Hey look you get in the middle of the line up with some of these powers who can damage you. Don't give him a fastball and a fastball count. But now he's deeper in the hole. And Tartable takes ball four. So the bases are loaded. Carnival walks for the 86th time, and now Galen Sisko's on his way to the mound from the Toronto dugout. So two walks and a single in between. The Yankees have the bases loaded with one out in the first. And Matt Noakes coming up, and Noakes has had a great career bat against Stottlemyre. And the Blue Jays talk it over. Even Wade Boggs couldn't check his swing, the first batter of the game, on a pitch out of the strike zone, so he didn't have good control of weight either. Cito Gaston, is there anyone who has a calmer demeanor? I think so. Might be the other manager in Canada, Felipe Alou. Mm -hmm. And his team the last two years have really played well in August and September. Have patience, consistency, and you got to have the discipline, and he does that in his own way. And you, you know you dealt the hand. You get your players from the front office. Here they are, and you say, "Hey, look, these are my players." And sooner or later, I have to have faith in them, trust them that they will start playing well for me. Matt Noakes. He could not check in time on the appeal to Dan Morrison down at third. Matt thought he's going to get a fastball with Todd Stylemar having control control problems, walking two and He's really going to cheat on a fastball, get out in front, and he takes something off the curveball. Noakes hitting 353 lifetime, and there's a shot up the right side. Another hit off Stottlemyre. James scores. Mattingly's on his way to the plate. Tartable goes to third, so Matt Noakes puts the Yankees out in front. Two to nothing. Noakes with that 353 lifetime average against Stottlemyre, including seven home runs, puts the Yankees out in front with a base hit past Olerud. Like a sure double turned into a single because of the lack of speed and Joe Carter and right. Fastball 
up in the zone a little bit. Usually Matt prefers the ball downside, but boy, he just likes fastballs no matter which way you throw. Them. So the Yankees have the first two runs of the game, and here's Jimmy Larritz taking one off the plate. Larritz in the lineup, replacing Paul O'Neill, who was scratched at the last moment. Jimmy hitting 316. And a shot back into left. Henderson all the way back, and that ball's gone. Home run for Jimmy Larratt. So the Yankees break out in front with a five run first. Larratt's belting a three run home run, his 13th home run of the year. That will give him 48 runs batted in. Jim almost looked like he hit that at the end of the bat to show you how strong he is. Almost with one hand on the follow through. What's the significance of Jimmy crossing the plate and pulling his right top shirt and then the bottom? A little Ricky Henderson there? Well, it very well could be an answer to that. Slider. Just keeps on carrying. You never know, and the dome is open today. They open it, well, just after batting practice. You never know what the ball's going to do in this ballpark, depending on the wind coming off Lake Ontario when it's open. Here's Bernie Williams. And he takes the pitch too low for a ball. So Jimmy Larritz has belted a home run. Bernie at 269 had a base hit last night. This one's out of play. It's 11 home runs given up by Stottlemyre this year. home run for Larritz off Toronto pitching. Foul ball that caught part of Pant Borders. One ball two strikes the count to Bernie Williams. Stottlemyre had surrendered two other home runs to Yankee hitters this year and both hit by Matt Noakes. Noakes drove in the first two runs with a base hit. It's the three run shot. Ernie Williams out on strengths. Ernie's a little closer to playing again, which may be another indication that he may be trying to pull the ball a little bit more. And it's interesting he'd be up close to the plate. This looked like a slider that got him, but Bernie has been vulnerable to pitches inside hard stuff. The bases are empty with two gone. Here's Mike Gallego. Mike starts the afternoon hitting 291. The pitch is too low. Ball one. In reference to Bernie, there's nothing wrong with being vulnerable to hard stuff inside. You can at least flare that ball and a lot of good hitters. You can bust them inside if you can get it there, but they got a chance to foul it off, fight it off, drop a base hit, and when you start pulling off the ball, you become vulnerable to pitches away, and that's where most pitchers get you out. Middle of the plate out. There's ball three. So Stottlemyer promptly behind Gallego, three and nothing. The Yankees with a five run inning so far. Four, the third walk of the inning. So Gallego takes a stroll, bringing up the ninth place hitter in the Yankee lineup, Pat Kelly. This team of Cito Gaston does have the ability to come back. They, in the month of September, they have scored about 5.7 runs per game. Spins around. Pat hitting 269. Got a start yesterday and went one out of three. We are blocked from the bullpens from our vantage point, so unless we can see a monitor as they have in each dugout, Scott Brow, the right hander, Johnny Sullivan, uh, we go back home to Somerville, New Jersey, the fellow in the jacket there, he's retiring after 54 years in baseball. And a chance this year to pick up another series check. Executors are out along with his wife, Betsy. 
This one fouled up the right side. Out of play, two and one, and he received something he'd been wanting uh -huh. for a long time, that uh, all-terrain vehicle. Four-wheeler, and so he'll be in good shape riding that thing around, maybe trying to do a little hunting. Yeah, I think he'd like to stick it out, but his knee and hip are so bad he can hardly throw batting practice. I think he's thrown so many pitches in batting practice, like Waller Iniac, he's going to end up having rotators and tough surgery. Two balls, two strikes to the count. Pat Kelly at the plate. Pitch is low for ball three, and Mike's in with a stolen base. It's his third steal of the year. So the Yankees, who had a couple steals in yesterday's game, Bernie Williams picking up two steals, and Gallego breaking on that 2 2 pitch in the first today. Try to open a hole for Pat Kelly in case he hit the ball on the ground or get him a new count if he was thrown out. Five run rules out the window in this game. Goodness. <laughs> That's one of those on again, off again, uh, mm -hmm. Sparky Anderson rules. The 3 2, and a foul ball off Pat's foot, and down he goes. Tigers leading over the Orioles in the fourth, 6 0 now. Expect to get just one game in, may not get the other. Apparently, the conditions are not good after the rain out yesterday. Yep. Gene Monahan is going to come out and take a look at Pat Kelly. Pat had a heck of a time getting himself healthy, and then once he did this month, had a tough time getting back into that lineup with the way Gallego and Velarde had played. It was fairly high up on the shin. So Gene Monahan will freeze that area. Yankees have scored five times in the first inning. They have three walks, three hits, an RBI single by Matt Noakes, driving in two runs, and a three run home run by Jim Larritz. There's Gallego, who walked with two outs and swiped second. And the 3 2 again. Broken bat pop up on the right side for Alomar, who makes the catch to retire the side. The Yankees send nine men to the plate and score five times in the first three, coming on the home run by Larence. Bottom of the first coming, Yankees five, Toronto coming into hit. New York Yankees baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. By your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your Tri-State Jeep and Eagle dealers. By AT&T, the best in the business. And by Nobody Beats the Wiz. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, Nobody Beats the Wiz. First from the Sky Dome, and the Yankees send Jim Abbott to the mound. Jim making his 31st start, 10 and 13. His earned run average stands at 4.42. You over a hit per inning, 206 hits in just under 200 innings. And a quick look at the 7-11 lineup: He'll face Henderson, White, Molitor, Carter, Old Root, Alomar, Fernandez, Sprague, and Borders. The same as yesterday. Ricky Henderson with an average of 292 takes the first pitch for a ball. The Blue Jays are 19 wins, 23 losses versus left handed starters. One of the reasons you cut the running game a little bit, there are three switch hitters that play every day, are all considerably lower from the right side, but most of that was before Ricky. And there's ball two. There's a reason they went out and got Ricky Henderson, it was to help them against left handed pitchers. Anderson for the year with 21 home runs. And they pitch in for a strike. Jim Abbott's last outing, his stuff was good. Except Pedro Munoz of the Twins drove in five runs with two home runs. And a foul out of play. Count goes 
closed at 2 2. So Abbott's still trying to find the winning side of things since his no hitter. He's had a no decision and two losses. The no decision against Kansas City in a 6 5 loss. And then he was beaten at Milwaukee 15 to 5, lost to Minnesota his last time out 5 4. And he goes all the way to 3 and 2 on Ricky Henderson. When you think about it, Jim Abbott really is still learning how to pitch. He just turned 26 well, not too many days ago. And no minor league experience coming in with new pitching coaches to a new team. I still think he's going to be a 15 game winner for the Yankees next year. Boggs bare hands this one to get Ricky Henderson. A fine play by the Yankee third baseman. A chop. And Wade Boggs, knowing the speed of Henderson, made the barehanded pickup and the throw to first to get Henderson, who went in head first. It was a patented Mike Schmidt play, the future Hall of Famer, on that artificial surface in Philadelphia. The bat, you get that ball bounding on the turf instead of staying down, you can get away with it. That's a terrific play by Wade. Whoever said that Ricky Henderson doesn't hustle, watch him come hard. Barely got him. Devon White. The pitch ball one. White starts the afternoon at 272. 247 from the right side, 283 left. Yeah, and you look up and down the lineup, same thing with Roberto Alomar. He's hitting less than 240 right handed. To the shortstop, and Gallego with a high throw, and he got it. Mattingly reaching toward the home plate side. Greg Kosk on the call down there at first base, and here's another look. You know you've got to hurry, and the ball runs high on Mike. He tagged him, I guess, is what the first base umpire Greg Kosk said, because the foot did not appear to be on the bag. Got him right there on the left shoulder. Nice play by Matty. Two outs here. Base is empty for Paul Molitor. Aren't you anxious to see the sixth place hitter to see if Alomar's going to bat left handed? Yeah. I, I think well, he said he might try it. He's thinking about it. He did earlier this year against Fernando Valenzuela. Talking to Roberto about it, he said, well, he said, yeah, my average is considerably down, but look at the left handers in the league. You start talking to Randy Johnson and Finley, Jimmy Key, he mentioned, Langston, and Viola, he talked to, he said, there's a lot of quality left handed starters. Abbott has the jump on Molitor, two strikes. <laughs> Molitor, the second leading hitter with an average of 334, tops in the league and hits with 203. Hey. This one upstairs, one ball, two strikes. Coming into play today, the only man in the league with as many as 200 hits. Inside. And he fouls this one. So the count still a ball and two strikes over in the National League. Lenny Dykstra leading the league with 188 hits. Molitor in the American League 203 and then Carlos Bayerga the Indians one short. He has 199. Can you imagine how many times Lenny Dykstra is going to be on base this year. What, about 140 bases on balls. Yep. What an incredible year Dykstra's had. Two balls, two strikes to the count. John Older has, John Older has a chance to get 200 hits here. In fact, he has indicated he might not want to rest when they clinch it. He's got 193 now. This one's fouled out of play. Well, you can see the breakdown coming to a new team. Some pretty good names on that list to come up with 200 hits, and Molitor has done that this year, his initial season with the Blue Jays. Steve Sachs did it with the Yankees in 89. Ground ball handled by Boggs and the throw to first in time. Three ground balls here in the first inning and a 1-2-3 first for Abbott against Toronto. And at the end of one, the Yankees five, Blue Jays nothing. York Yankees solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. We'll have more in a minute. Wade Boggs leads off. The first pitch is 
too high a ball one. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the picture description to count to this game without the express written consent of the Yankees and Madison Square Garden Network is prohibited. Foul ball out of play. The old disclaimer interrupt us, huh? <laughs> it's so frustrating, too. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Boggs, James, and Mattingly. Dave Justice, what a year. You could see it in spring training, the way he was swinging the bat. He hit his 38th today to give Atlanta a two to one lead in Philadelphia in the second. And that's quite a race in the National League West. Off Ooh. the plate end. The count goes to two balls, two strikes. Well, the Blue Jays trying to close out the East today. The Yankees attempting to avoid that. Off to a 5 0 lead. There's ball three. So, full count. Boggs, his first time up, a strikeout victim when he tried to check his swing. Stottlemyre had two strikeouts in the first, but he walked three, gave up three hits, including a home run. Boy, Todd threw a lot of breaking balls in that first inning. Changed his pitching patterns since the last we saw him. And he walks Boggs. So the Yankees put their leadoff man aboard here in the second inning. We'll check the nobody beats the Wiz out of town scoreboard. Detroit leading Baltimore in the first game in the fourth. That's a 6 nothing contest now. Cito Gaston's on his way to the mound. Stottlemyre struggled through the first and now gets a visit from the manager. Todd Stottlemyre's last outing, the complete game, he allowed three hits, walked just one and struck out ten Red Sox batters. Of course, the Red Sox are not a real good offensive team with Andre Dawson out and some of the others hurt. Billy Hatcher, another. You have to think that maybe Cito, who's pretty understated in his own way, tried to talk to Stottlemyre about keying down a little bit. Rest of the scoreboard. First game, Texas down to Chicago. In Chicago, one nothing in the fifth. Minnesota three. Boston nothing in the third. Cleveland leading Milwaukee in the second, one nothing. And here's Deion James. Dion goes after the first pitch, pops it up foul, and that's going to carry out a play. And Sprague over there to give it a chase, but no chance. James walked for the 31st time, his first time up. baseman John Olderu. Until you get in the corners at this ballpark there's considerable amount of foul territory and you get guys like Fernandez and Alomar you, you forget how they can go into foul territory to the stands with their speed and pick off foul balls. That wasn't particularly difficult. You always think of people catching fair balls and balls in the gap like Devon White does better than anybody else in baseball. Don Mattingly. Takes one all the way for a ball. Boy, Toronto turned some beautiful double plays, didn't they? Fernandez and Alomar oh, yesterday. Boy. Two of them are real beauties. Fernandez very happy, I think, that he's back in artificial surface because of his style of play off San Diego field and off the Mets field. Mattingly ahead on the count, two balls and no strikes. Don's average now 289. The second, Alomar Fernandez, and the throw to first for the double play. Alomar Fernandez to Olderud, and the Yankees are finished in the second. No run to walk the double play, and nobody left. Bottom of inning two coming, 5 0 New York. Back in Toronto. 
Yankees holding a 5 0 lead as we move into the bottom of inning two. Joe Carter, the third leading RBI man in the American League, steps in and drills one deep to left. James all the way back, and that ball's gone. Carter's 31st home run of the year on the first pitch. Carter belts one out to make it 5 to 1. The 20th home run given up by Jim Abbott as Carter connects to put the Blue Jays on the board. When they lined up their list of potential free agents after the World Championship last year, the number one priority for them to sign was Joe Carter. They wanted to sign him first and foremost, and then they talked about Manny Lee second. He went to Texas. Jimmy Key was down on their priority list, actually. John Olerud in a ground ball, knocked down by Gallego. He picks it up in the throw in time. So Gallego takes care of John Olerud. He jumps all over this first pitch. Little cutter from Jim Abbott, just trying to get ahead in the count with a 5 0 lead. Carter's been just a terrific RBI man. His career in the big leagues, National American, it doesn't matter the style of pitching. He goes up there hacking. Well, he's hit three home runs off Yankee pitching. Guess what? And two off Abbott. Whoops. Whoa, down wrong. goes Roberto Alomar, who was it. hitting left-handed. Hope that umpire's going to get him first. He's no. awarding him first that didn't base. Hit him. He, he grazed it. it he so fell Alomar, on his left. That who went him. up hitting left-handed goes down and is hit by a pitch says Al Clark Buck Showalter out to try to make his point How about this, this take is, another look I think he fell on his wrist getting out of the way it didn't appear to hit him from the replay you know it's interesting you talked about him doing it against Valenzuela Roberto said I might try to said against Valenzuela I doubled the first time up the next two times up Valenzuela knocked me down and struck me out two times. So that may just turn him back around to the right side. Did you see that hit him? No. Nope. I didn't either. He didn't know it. Roberto was just bailing out in a hurry. The ground came up to meet him awfully quickly. The one thing he did say about hitting left-handed against Abbott as opposed to Valenzuela, he said, well, this is Abbott can throw a little harder than uh -huh. Fernando. He just did. Yep. Yes, he did. And here's Tony Fernandez with Alomar at first and one out. Fernandez hitting 306 after hitting 225 with the Mets when the Blue Jays brought him back to Toronto. When these Blue Jay base stealers get on, they put on one or the other wrist, the little thing that Bobby Baylor carries the first base coach. Right there, that protective device with the Velcro, so when they slide, it's head first so they don't jam it into the bag and if they go feet first so that they don't jam their wrist to break their fall it's quite interesting we see Devon White do it quick step off move by Abbott that time as Mattingly got back to the bag to take the throw and now Mattingly halfway in to square something away with Abbott again well it'd be a way that Alomar might try and retaliate even down four and that is by stealing a base and getting in scoring position well, he has 50 steals for the year and is fourth in the league in that department well you look at the offensive numbers for Toronto home runs you look at league leaders average top three you look at runs batted in you look at stolen bases well, they're popping up all over the place among the league leaders as you might expect is high to Fernandez. I Two balls, no strikes. I believe a good base dealer like Alomar who is so relaxed with that quick step. I don't think that Don Maddenly bothers him. I don't think he even sees him. I think he's so focused on the point in Jim Abbott that he wants to pick up his first move. Now he might feel Maddenly there, but I don't think he sees him. Maybe peripherally. Another move to first. Alomar back in. getting back to the outfield side of the bag. Mattingly with a sweeping tag attempt there. We're in the 
bottom of the second. The Yankees leading five to one. Well, that was a great message sent by Jim Abbott. Shows a little toughness. Shows, hey, look, if you don't respect me from the right side, I'm not going to respect you. Runners going, and the pitch is foul out of play. He had a pretty good jump there, too. Yep. So Alomar will return to first. Fernandez lining one into the stands up the right side. There's the jump. Don decoys back, trying to get Alomar to take a false step backwards. He doesn't buy it. And when Don does get off, as we showed you from that sky cam, and goes with him, as the runners come back in, he doesn't have as good an angle on the tag as we saw Alomar sneak behind him, and Don was off the back. So that does work some ways, an advantage to Alomar. And a pitch in there for a strike. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Alomar grazed by that pitch, according to Al Clark. He's at first base. Continues to toss over there. Jim trying to hit that moving target called Don Mattingly. <laughs> this time, Alomar gets back, so he's reading him a little bit better. He got back much more easily. On the nobody beats the way scoreboard. Atlanta out in front of the Phillies, two to one in the bottom of the second at the vet. Atlanta holding a game and a half lead on San Francisco in the West of the National League. Another move to first. You keep hearing out of that Atlanta cap, former manager, of course. Uh, the Blue Jays, Bobby Cox, Ron Gantz, name mentioned as an MVP, along, of course, with Bonds, who is starting to smoke the ball again, and Dykstra, but you don't hear justice very often. He's got 38 dingers. Ground ball. It's going to go through the middle. Bernie Williams with the pickup. Alomar stopped at second. Fernandez has a hit. And the Blue Jays have two men on in the second. With Jim Abbott, they try and go up the middle or the other way. It's hard to do with the ball coming in on you if you're right handed, especially down and in. And Tony doesn't pull the ball. He shoots it up the middle. So Fernandez is aboard. He's hitting over 380 against Yankee pitching. Yeah, I thought it was interesting, the interview that Al Trotman did with Tony Fernandez, because Tony was so distressed by what he heard. Even in their chapel service, a fellow told me that he spoke for 15 minutes, and he was so hurt. And the alleged remarks, or apparent remarks, if you will, of Dallas Green. Here's Sprague. Out in front, strike one. Two men on with one out. Alomar hit by a pitch. Fernandez followed with a base hit. Matt Noakes thought he saw something at second base with Alomar stealing sides. Tony, uh, Jerry Howard, one of the radio broadcasts in Chapel, Tony just got up and doesn't usually verbalize things, but he is so sensitive and talk about being challenged, his integrity as he indicated with Al, and that he would not play the game 100%. And huge Dominican population in New York. Tony would go to the Bronx and to the schools there and bring shoes and gloves and new equipment to all those kids, and he knows they hear and read that. He's kind of a role model for them in that area. This pitch is inside. There was a bluff start. Alomar started to break off second base. He's got the second highest total of steals of third in the American League. First, Ricky Henderson. You can see Fernandez react to Alomar's bluff, and Fernandez trying to read him. There, there they go. Well, the pitch gets away from Noakes. And here comes Alomar around. He is out at the plate as Abbott puts the tag on him. And Fernandez winds up at third. The ball, the ball two, got away from Noakes, who hustled to the backstop. And Abbott covered the plate. The so pitch into the dirt. Wild pitch. Looked like Noakes was going to try and set up to get the trailing runner and Alomar wow see Alomar will kick that foot did he try and spike Jim Abbott coming on although they don't have spikes on on the turf Nick Leva waving him on good play by Noakes getting out of watch see if he kicks it Nah, he's okay just a good hard aggressive slide no over aggressive time. when you're down by four but you can see he was fired up by getting thrown in and Noakes made a fine play yeah. to get that ball back to the plate 
Did you see Fernandez? Sprague swings Whoa. and fouls this one, and Fernandez had a break. He came almost halfway down the third base line toward the plate. Take a look at that tag at the plate. Leva, the third base coach, replacing Rich Hacker, wanted him to go perfect. I mean, he pounced on it, as you said, Noakes, but a perfect throw, and Abbott's right there. He didn't even have to move the glove. Look out. Wow. This one behind Sprague. I'll tell you what. Uh, Jim Abbott, when Tony Fernandez, Abbott is fired up. Now he's looking right at staring Tony. Look at him staring uh, Tony Fernandez down. When Tony came up the line the first time, Bluffman, so sure that, that is uh, just wildness. And he just stared Fernandez down. Jim Abbott is got fire in those eyeballs today, doesn't he? And a chopper to third. Boggs up for this one to throw to first. A nice play by Mattingly to dig it out, and that retires the side. So the Blue Jays settle for the run on the home run by Carter. By a lot going on in the bottom of the second through two five to one Yankees. On to the third crowd of better than 50,000. Jim Abbott battled through that second inning and then some held the Blue Jays to the leadoff home run. Be interesting to see how this game progresses here as Tarnival swings and misses at the first offering from Todd Stottlemyre with spirits running uh, high there in the bottom of the second inning. 0-2 the count to Tarnival. And when times were different, when Tony Cloninger pitched and the rules were a little different, he would go at you hard inside many times. So he had to appreciate what Jim did. All those baseballs slipping out of his fingers. There's Todd's been noted for it. Todd at one time, uh, and he's downstairs below the uh, below the head level. But at one time, somebody said him that might have been Jimmy Key or Mike Flanagan that he'd rather hit somebody than get him out. He's changed <laughs> since then. He thought he'd never be a pitcher if he just continued in that vein. He tried to go away to Tarnable that time after coming in hard off the plate. He missed, and the count is two balls, two strikes. Base hit. Tartable got the hands in, was jammed, and got it back through the middle. So Dandy's on for the second time. After a first inning walk, he has a base hit to open the third. The Yankees have four hits. And here's Matt Noakes. Noakes singled home the first two Yankee runs in a five run first. Starts him with a strike. That's a pitch they like to see him throw more often. Now, Todd does throw the ball pretty hard, low 90 at time, but uh, not hard enough to continually throw the ball by people. So he changes up first pitch on Noakes, shows him a little something different. And Noakes has another hit off Stottlemyre, dropping this one into short right. Carter with the pickup. Stopping at second is Tartable. So the Yankees start the third by putting their first two men on. Noakes is two for two. This time, Matt hits a slider. Dangerous area to pitch Matt Noakes. Down and in. So with two men on and nobody out, Jim Larritz belted a 1-0 pitch out. He hit a slider out to left in the first inning. Blue Jays on the corners are looking for a possible butt. Larritz giving no signs of that takes the pitch down. Well, we've lost some of the sun. It's quickly becoming overcast here in Toronto. With the wind at times whipping up a bit. He got in on Larritz on the infield fly. So Fernandez takes care of that one. You see the wind effect on that right there? It's clouding up considerably here. You can see where Tony Fernandez started, but there are swirling currents because of this dome. When it's open, uh, it can play tricks. We had 
clear blue skies when this game started, but the clouds have started to roll in. And here is Bernie Williams. Yankees five runs, five hits. Bernie takes one inside. Todd Stottlemyre with two strikeouts. They both came in the first when he got Boggs and Williams. Bernie takes this one as it breaks down and into him off the plate. You know, the one statistic about Bernie that and he's had a, a pretty good year is grounding into 17 double plays, 11 from the left side. You know, that's where he gets most of his at bat. But with his speed, you say, how can it happen? I think it's still a young hitter still learning how to hit in situations and maybe not being as selective as he should uh, to get the ball more in the air. Now Stottlemyre is behind him, 3 and 0. Oh. And he walks it. It's five walks given up by Stottlemyre, and the Yankees have the bases loaded in the third. Bases loaded, one out for Mike Gallego. Cito Gaston letting him pitch out of his own troubles. Gallego walked his first time up. Stottlemyre walked him on four pitches. He's just walked Williams on four to load the bases. And Gallego looks at a strike. Brown was up earlier and is throwing once again in the Toronto bullpen. Check swing, foul ball. That'll be interesting, I think, next year for the Yankees if they're going to go with young pitchers, as some people indicate they might, if they're going to let them pitch out of trouble this early. You never learn. I remember when Bobby Maddock, when this team was losing, he was the manager, the oldest manager ever to start. He was almost mid 60s when he managed this ball club. He was a talent evaluator, talent developer, and he told Dave Steve, Jim Clancy, Louis Slayout, all those pitchers, look, you're pitching out of it, boys. The only way you're going to learn. To learn on the big league level is tough. You're going to have to do it. Fly ball right field sends Carter back. Carnival makes the tag and will score on the sacrifice fly. And again, the Yankees have a five run lead, six to one, as Gallego drives in his 53rd run of the year with a fly ball to right field. Well, the Yankees pick up that run. The Blue Jays got back in the bottom of the second. Mike just serving it out there, almost looking to hit the bottom half of the ball. Got to pitch upstairs a little bit. First and second with two outs for Pat Kelly. Into the dirt, and Borders keeps it out in front of the plate. Yankees with six runs, five hits. And they have a six to one lead. Yankees have dropped five in a row. It seems like in the month of September, Toronto's never lost. And that's almost yep. true. <laughs> they haven't lost much. They won 12 out of their last 13. <laughs> Kelly looks at a strike. The Blue Jays have picked up a seven and a half game lead and they've done it rather quickly. Kelly fouls this one. That's going to be down the right side into the seats. Running the count to a ball and two strikes. The Blue Jays picked up seven games over the last 16 days. On the ninth of this month, the Yankees were tied with Toronto for first place. Gene Fury Tanachi on five consecutive Western Division championships with Oakland and three consecutive World's Championships sitting alongside Cito Gaston. Interim manager when Cito had the bad back last year. Mm -hmm. Two and two. And that's something that still bothers Cito. He's got the, the back problem that flares up. And uh, his rotator cuff is gone. Swing and a miss by Pat Kelly. The side, the Yankees settle for one run on two hits. They leave two and will go into the bottom of inning three, six to 
Taiwan Yankees. New York Yankee baseball is brought to you in part by Gillette Sensor and the new Gillette series. Gillette, the best a man can get. Well, the roof is starting to close here at the Sky Dome. They've had rain in nearby Buffalo, and the clouds have moved in here to Toronto. The temperature has dropped a few degrees, and we have wind kicking up. So they're closing the roof. Pat Borders trying to check on the first pitch and a foul ball, strike one. I've forgotten specifically how much it costs to either open or close, but somewhere between five and ten dollars. Yeah, it? yeah, I, yeah that's what I heard. Eight, eight to ten dollars yeah. to close this. Borders sends it into right center field. Larritz and Williams closing, and Jimmy Larritz makes the grab. in the bottom of the third. Yankees leading six to one. They had a five run first and another run in the third. Blue Jays picked up their run in the second. Ricky Henderson. Henderson chopped a third his first time. Boggs made a nice barehanded pickup and throw to get him. Ricky, another hitter when he goes in that deep crouch that they like to crowd him inside and get him up out of the crouch and bust him inside off that elbow. Some said that when he came over here, and of course he's had a bad hand when he got hit, but also that he wasn't hitting well because of a little leg problem. He couldn't get down in the deeper crouch, but he seems now like he's getting back into it. This one is high. Two balls and no strikes. Well, he had a a couple different hand injuries, and then he had the uh, that dry ice yeah, burn on his foot. The trainer <laughs> that's in about a couple of days. Strike on the inside part. Something a trainer might not want to consider doing in New York. <laughs> Taking a star like Ricky and putting dry ice, getting a burn. <laughs> square the count. Ricky also just a few days ago has a new baby. He said the last his wife told him to be named Anita but he said I wasn't sure I haven't talked to her for about a day. <laughs> so you're not making the decision. No sir. The 2-2 bounce foul behind Nick Leva. Well this has not been a very good place for the Yankees since it opened. The Yankees 8 and 20 at the Sky Dome since uh, 1989. It's been tough again this year. Bouncing ball. Gallego, nice play. Got him. Mike Gallego takes care of Ricky Henderson. Perhaps one of the reasons is a lack of team speed. Remember how easily Mike Gallego was getting in front of baseballs hit up the middle on the dirt and grass at the stadium or any other turf park. He has to make a terrific play on this one to get that ball. And of course, the ball doesn't slow down on the turf. The advantage on the turf, it always bounds up. It doesn't stay down. In one hand, a lot more balls. Here's Devon White. And the first pitch is in there for a strike. Well, the Yankees winning percentage here as bad as it's been throughout the history of the franchise in any other park. Wrigley Field in Los Angeles when the Angels played out there that first year in 61 three and six and old league park in Cleveland rank among the worst. There's a base hit into center by White. Two out base hit. Look out in the dugout. It's going to be an eight. The second goes Devon White. They sit on a high changeup, and then Devo round in the bag. It's almost a setup play where Maddie will trail him as if there's he's not going to hold him close. The catcher will sneak behind. Slow curve ball, and then when Bernie lobs it in, Devon White. Angle looks. 
And that's almost, it's a, it's a play the Yankees have tried before where Mattingly very nonchalantly just goes off the bag and then the catcher sneaks behind this time and error is charged. Did they give that to They're going to give it to Noakes. They should. E2. Sure. I don't know if he got blocked out by Devon White and couldn't see Gallego's throw, but he did get a glove on it. So White is at second base. And here's Paul Molitor. So instead of that simply being a two out single, it's a hit and an error. Now Abbott must face Molitor with a man in scoring position on the first pitch is inside for a ball. Paul Molitor, 37 years old, 107 runs batted in already on the year. And he fouls this one back. It's one and one. has decided to make his home up here this winter with their daughter. I believe she's nine years old. From Minnesota, he sold his home just north of Wisconsin. He said, well, somebody has it's cold up. He said, I grew up with a snow shovel, but uh, he's looking forward to it for his daughter culturally, he thinks, and the school systems are good. Is Devil going to try it, too? Nope. This one skipped away from Noakes. trouble locating that ball at first and took a couple extra beats. That's why it gave you an idea that maybe White would think about trying to score. So the Yankees continue to have troubles defensively. Matt has it pop off the heel of his glove. A wild pitch that's two in this ball game, an error. Frank Tanana's only two games with the Yankees. They committed five errors behind him. It's not just the offense that had cooled down and the pitching that's been erratic. The defense has gotten the pitching staff in a lot of trouble. Two balls and a strike to count on Paul Molitor. Fastball is up and in. You know, when you get breakdowns in so many areas as the Yankees have over the last few weeks, I think there's only one answer. You, you break down hitting, it's a slump, or defense, you could have a slump, or pitching, but. When it's all areas, it's usually a very tired, worn-out team. The 3-1, ground ball to short. Gallego up with this one, and the throw to first in time to retire the side. No runs, one hit, an error, a wild pitch, and a man left. We're through three. Al Troutwig will be along with the score, 6-1 to one Yankees. Piscopo in attendance at Sky Dome today, along with someone who has uh, their baseball heart in the right place. If you're a, a person who cheers for the Yankees, Al Troutwick, along with Tony Kubek, and this game moves along, Tony, with one of the great architectural achievements of our time going through its paces. Isn't that something? How long does it take? About 45 minutes? I forgot. No, I think exactly. it's, I think it's long, 22. Huh? 22. This is going to go from an outdoor game to an indoor game. As we move along here, and Wade Boggs lines it out to Ricky Henderson for the first out. I saw a game here when Lloyd Mosby was at the plate, and they told the home plate umpire, Rich Garcia, the rain is coming. We're going to close the dome. And he said, no, nope, no, nope, I'm the home plate umpire. I'm the umpire in chief. I decide. And Lloyd Mosby was hitting in the rain. Well, it was being closed when Rich finally gave in. Listen to the <laughs> powers that be upstairs in the weather, man. You saw Matt Noakes and Mike Gallego discussing the, the throw that was the play that led to Devon White taking second base on what was an error charge to Matt Noakes. Didn't cost the Yankees, and now the uh, big center portion of the roof is going to slide into place after the shell completed its revolution over our heads here, fouled off by Deion James. You know what would be ideal for Mr. Steinbrenner? He builds one similar to this with those on that barge and just floats it from shore to shore between New Jersey and New York. What a concept, Tony. I proposed it to Dwayne yesterday. He didn't bite it. He didn't think it was very good. A floating team. Deion James is out. It's, uh, it's really remarkable. I sat here during the top of the third inning and just marveled at how this is all going on with 50,000 people here. Actually, you know, if you had a floating team, mm -hmm. you might be able to establish a, a record like the Blue Jays have with the dome closed. So that it's going to swing in their favor now with the dome closed. Of course, they're three and one when this happens. The dome actually closes during a game. But if you had a floating team, you could go far enough offshore and have gambling also as, as part of the stadium. Mm -hmm. Well, 
Well, you were watching it uh, open earlier. I was playing with my tinker toy. <laughs> you were. Don Mattingly with two outs. How am I supposed to follow that? Am I, do I really want to know any more about that mm -hmm. line? I don't think so. Don doesn't like his swing. A fastball up out of the strike zone. It's when Don gets in trouble. And it's either an injury that he will not tell anybody about or when he starts not recognizing pitches and swinging at pitches out of the strike, especially high ones. Yankees had the five-run first inning. Mattingly out to left. Ricky Henderson pulls it in. Inning that has not been like the way Todd Stottlemyre has pitched today. It's either one, two, three, or a lot of trouble. This was a one, two, three effort. Back in a moment. For the fourth inning, it's Sky Dome in Toronto. Yankees up by five, six to one. Joe Carter will face Jim Abbott, and has been the case so far in this game. Yankee infielders know they had better be a little bit more on their toes with the way Abbott induces ground balls and. It's been very much the case so far. Fouled off by Carter. I think it'll be interesting to see if the intrigue continues when Alomar steps in the third hitter in this, whether the intimidation of Jim Abbott over his head will turn him around on the right side and say, you're not going to scare me and step right back on the left side. Seven of the nine outs so far recorded via the ground ball. Swing by Carter. Carter had home run number 31 on the season and the last few rays of daylight peering through the closing roof at Sky Dome. Some symbolism for the Yankee season perhaps. The seventh now Detroit is beating Baltimore six to two. who's thrown two wild pitches, bounces that one in the dirt. And with all the ground balls, Tony, we've seen some pretty sharp play by Yankee infielders. Mike Gallego with a couple, a bare hand throw by Wade Boggs. Matty Lee on Devon White when uh, Gallego's throw ran high and he jumped up and tagged Devon. Abbott got five runs in the first inning, and if he pitches to his ERA, that would be enough for a victory because it's under five, his ERA. Well, some of these ERAs this year, I think, are uh, expansive, but that live year baseball are a little bit of an aberration. Well, we don't know what the ball's going to be next year. We'll do the same or get even livelier. We can't tell that from year to year. I well, think you find a lot of pitchers' earn run averages are higher, and team earn run averages go right up with it. A full count pitch. Base hit by Carter to start things off here in the bottom of the fourth. Something Joe Carter does not do a whole lot of work to count full. He many times puts the ball in play early in the count. His brother Fred, visiting along with him, is moving to Minneapolis to open a hitting range. He's closing some more. This is almost now officially an indoor game. Carter breaking out of an 0 for 18 slump in a very big way. Now the first pitch to John Olrood is a ball. Coming in 0 for 18, a home run and a single two for two. Olrood, seven shy of 200. He's got 109 walks, 33 of those intentional. That's getting on base a lot, isn't it? 11 times his average dip below 400. 10 times he was able to get it back to at least 400. Now it's down to 364. Still hitting over 400 against the Yankees this season. Nobody out. Ground ball at Mattingly. And the Yankees turn it. 3-6-3. Three, three. Two Jays are gone. Two players facing each other, neither of whom ever spent a day in the minor leagues. Abbott and Olrud. And Abbott wins out in this one. Olrood trying to take advantage of shooting the ball through the right side, and many good hitters, as like Olrood is, will try and do that. But you shouldn't do that with Matting. Look how aggressively he closes up that hole to prevent a first and third. So, wow. Might have been some first baseman. Well, Joe wasn't sure. Joe may have thought that 
Mattingly had stepped on first first and removed the force. He wasn't sure. He just saw the throw go over his head. Roberto Alamo hit by a pitch and then thrown out at the plate. When runners were going, the ball was a wild pitch past Matt Noakes, Abbott covering the plate. Good play between Noakes and Abbott. Nailing Roberto Alomar as he tried to score. Down the line and foul. You know, Tony, when you say the ball is livelier, you know, it almost it smacks of a conspiracy. Like no, I don't think so. I think it's manufacturing techniques. You need better machinery, better yarn, better cover, better but, seams, but better why, stitches, but why better cyclical? court. Why cyclical? Then? Don't ask me. You got to ask the company that makes the balls. 87. The balls are flying in an awesome fashion. Just look at the home run totals. And it isn't all expansion. I mean, expansion is going to cause more home runs because they're weakening the pitching, but not the distance. That didn't all get stronger at the same time. And the scouts that put stopwatches on fly balls and chart the hang time, you're telling us again this year, they're staying in the air longer. Well, Jim Abbott and the Yankees get out of it with a nifty double play turn by Don Mattingly. Final moments of the roof connecting. We are fully and officially indoors. Our New York Yankees baseball is brought to you in part by your Nissan dealers. It's time to expect more from a car. Al Trowick, Tony Kubek, Dwayne Stats back with you in the next inning as the Yankees and Jays move into the fifth and it's a line drive caught by Ed Sprague off the bat of Danny Tartable one out one pitch how much has Ed Sprague improved defensively since the start of this season he's the guy they were going to convert to a catcher and when they lost Kelly Gruber over to California boy what range he is not a fast runner in his position what a first quick step Matt Noakes making the most of what has been a rare opportunity to catch a game for the Yankees. But of course, he and Jim Abbott teamed up for the no hitter, and they're a tandem again today. And Noakes is two for two with two RBIs back in the first inning. Couldn't help but notice that in our pregame Yankee scorecard, when we showed Frank Tanana's clinching game for Detroit in 87, there was Matt Noakes in the middle of the celebration. He gets underneath this one and it will find the seats. That was the Larry Herndon who's now the hitting instructor for the Detroit Tigers game. Line drive, lower deck of Jimmy Key. In fact, they were great pitching. Mike Flanagan pitched a terrific game for Toronto. In fact, Mike, this Friday uh, down in Baltimore, we're going to just leave there, is going to be putting the Baltimore Orioles Hall of Fame. Isn't that nice? a strike one ball and two against Matt Noakes off speed Noakes cannot hold up this performance by Stottlemyre has got to be a bit of a mystery for the Toronto Blue Jays he has settled in now. Retired six in a row. His control was way off the first three innings. He's starting to use his off-speed stuff a little better instead of just trying to throw everything hard. Another foul ball into the full seats here at Sky Dome. Count holds at two and two. Blue Jays have gotten plenty of runs for Todd Stottlemyre, so he's he's pitched in some games in which gave up runs but the Blue Jays were better five nothing is last time out that's been a much talked about performance against Boston 14 eight prior to that 10 four prior to that he gets almost six runs a game from the Blue Jays. Well last year remember we saw him uh, he, a little late problem he changed his delivery his father saw him on TV Mal and said that's not your delivery and he kind of had a tender shoulder because of it and then when he went on the DL for a while he came back and uh, He's been inconsistent again this year. Slider that misses. Stayed up there, had no bite to it. One out walk to Matt Noakes. Todd's got to be able to throw that slider when he's in a fastball count to these hitters. That is the sixth walk issued by Stottlemyre. 
It's been all or nothing for him in terms of trouble. Nine Yankees to the plate in the first, five runs. One, two, three. Inning in the second. A walk in that inning, but a double play helped him get out of that. Then six more Yankees and another run in the third. A one, two, three inning in the fourth, and now a one out walk with Jimmy Laritz, who hit his 13th home run, driving in three back in the first. Strike one. important nice date to remember in Yankee history today it was 22 years ago today that Roger Maris hit his 60th home run and tied the record set by the legend Babe Ruth what's really remarkable is that with all that in the newspapers and all those headlines outside corner for a strike only 7,000 and change came out to the stadium the next day to watch his first attempt to hit 61 I cannot believe that with the team that you had, Tony, and that you played on, that only 8,000 people came out the day after that. I think like the players, people were more interested in pennant races than individual achievements. That has changed a little bit these days. I know what you're saying, but the uh, Yankees, as I recall, drew 1.7 million. Uh, football, really, and baseball is on kind of a downswing. Some people, the ownership now says baseball's on a downswing again. Don't buy it. By it. Uh, the attendance records have been set again this year. Football was starting to come on strong, but didn't getting you, a lot of the attention. It was that time of year when football was uh, going. I know what you're saying. Didn't yeah. you sit on the bench that day and say, no, where is the city? No. You didn't? No. I didn't. Some other players might have. We Did watching, you know we it? Watching, we were watching Roger. <laughs> we were watching the fans. Can't control that. And at that time, ownership didn't really have to promote their product and didn't that much. It was just the way it was done. Larence with a hot shot to Alomar. Quick flip. There's Fernandez. Oh, he's so smooth. Blair is gone. It's a 4-6-3 DP to get Stoudemire into the sixth. Yankees up by five, 6-1. We'll be back on MSG in a moment. Good news to most of the people in this town and to fans of the Rangers, too. It's hockey time, and tomorrow at 7.30 following Rangers game night on MSG2, the Rangers will take on the New York Islanders in preseason NHL hockey. And you'll see it here, of course, on MSG. Toronto Blue Jays trailing the Yankees by five. Yankees trying to uh, stall the champagne celebration for just a bit. Yankee loss, an Oriole loss, and the Blue Jays are the champions of the AL East for the fifth time in their history. Tony Fernandez will start things off for the Blue Jays. Jays have four hits and one run off of Jim Abbott. Who's kept his infielders busy. Nine of the 12 outs have been recorded on ground balls. One was a play at the plate. That was another out. One was a strikeout. There's only been one fly ball. Jim has hit a batter, Alomar, who he didn't really hit. First base. He hasn't walked anybody. You notice the change in the lighting conditions since they closed this? Hitting conditions are not quite as good right now as they were when you had natural light. More shadows you see around the umpires and some of the players. Nothing in two. So I like to see what the one production is. When the dome is closed mm. as opposed to open with natural light. I would guess we have that somewhere. Day games, you don't have a real sample of day games because so many games are played at night, and when it's open at night, of course, conditions are almost like that right now with the lights. Here's a reminder from your friends at Budweiser remember when you're having good times with good friends, drink responsibly because friends know when to say when. One ball, two strikes to Tony Fernandez. Look good. I think it's a 
fair comparison, Tony? Tony Fernandez is the Bernie Williams of the Blue Jays, sensitive and talented. Yeah. Good strike right there. Jim Abbott did not get. Well, Tony, when he first came to the Blue Jays, you know, had the normal, whoops, this is pretty hard, but not enough. Deion James is there, and there's one away. Tony had the language problem, but as you know, uh, you know, Tony, from when he spoke to you, speaks very well now. Blue Jays provide and have for all their minor league kids coming from the Dominican or Puerto Rico, Venezuela. They have interpreters the first time they see these kids. On the nobody beats the Wiz football board. Third quarter, Miami up big over Buffalo. Indianapolis up 6-0 over Cleveland. Sounds like a baseball game. Minnesota by two over Green Bay, Tony Kubek's favorite team. And a shot over the head of Mike Gallego by Ed Sprague. It's a one-out single for the Jays here in the fifth. A few more updates for you. Rams in a tight one over the Houston Oilers in the Dome. Chicago big over Tampa Bay. Detroit leading Phoenix 33-17. All the early games into the, the third quarter in the NFL. Pat Borders with one on and one out. You see that a lot with Jim Abbott. Not only do you get a lot of foul balls off players' feet and shins, but you get a lot of hold foul balls left of third. It's the only way you can hit that cutter hard. Down in, usually off the plate, but getting the barrel out and the angle pulls it foul. It's said by so many, Tony, that Jim Abbott needs another pitch. Is that something that he could possibly accomplish in one offseason? Is there something that he could easily do or he, not? He's already worked on it with Tony Conninger between starts. He doesn't have the confidence during the game to choke the change up back and get it to go away from right handed hitters. We saw him throw a couple in his no-hitter, saw him throw a couple in his last few outings, but he's going to have to have the confidence to do it at will. And Tony Cloninger thinks that the time will come, he's still young, 26, that he'll be a take, able to take a with seam fastball and make it run away hard from the right-handed hitter. And he'll have two extra pitches, but his arm action at this point precludes him from doing that. Even the way he holds the baseball, something in his delivery that middle finger puts the rotation almost like a spiral in a football that makes it go into the right-hander. And, and Tony Clowney has been very careful that he doesn't change the basic delivery of Jim Abbott. That's how pitchers can get hurt. To right field, Jimmy Larratt's late start. Had to put a basket to it. Two that, away. I hope that got in the bank of lights. talked a few moments ago about uh, Roger Maris and 22 years ago today you uh, had a visit with a very interesting fan whose baseball card collection was portable. Well, he bought yes. a... Can you believe it, the value of some of these cards? It's dangerous carrying around that much value with yeah. you. Yeah. Chairman of the board. And there it is. Roger Maris that card with the cards. Strike one to Ricky Henderson, top of the order. Ricky's been retired twice, and both good plays. Mike Gallego and Wade Boggs got him. Boggs on a bare-handed one to start the game. You get in the debate about who should be in the Hall of Fame when Scooter's name comes to mind, but should Roger Maris, Veda Pinson, Kenny Boyer, Ron Santo, Richie Ashburn? had some pretty good numbers too. Roger's career really wasn't long enough, but boy, for six years, he could do an awful lot. How do you not put a guy in the Hall of Fame just purely on the fact that he had the greatest home run season of all time? That's the stuff that the Hall of Fame is made of. Yeah. Did you save any cards of that year? Nothing? Yeah. Never been a collector. Unfortunately, they would have they been worth a lot. and one strike to Ricky Henderson. Like the Yankees, the Blue Jays have a very good on-base percentage. Another reason why they can come back in ball games, five or six down. On-base average is just slightly below the Yankees now, but they haven't had Ricky Henderson all year. Broken back.
bat ground ball box hustles the throw and it gets the speedy Henderson at first so Jim Abbott pitches through the fifth with a 6-1 lead the lanky Yankees are cruising at the moment I'll see you on the post game report Dwayne will rejoin Tony in a moment MSG is brought to you in part by Chase Manhattan credit cards. Chase Manhattan, profit from the experience. Rejoined by Dwayne Stats. Todd Stottlemyre will face Bernie Williams. He is struck out and walked. Then Mike Gallego and Pat Kelly. 6-1 Yankees. Stottlemyre dug himself a very deep hole in the first. The Yankees batted around for five runs on three base hits. He could not find his control. Curveball strike. But the last couple innings, he's been very good, Tony. And a double play ball out of Larritz in the fifth. Huck Flenner, F L E N E R. The lighter starting yesterday, giving Cito Gaston a strong six. Leonard and Castillo, the two left-handers in the bullpen for the Jays. No balls, two strikes to Bernie Williams. This misses inside, one and two. Down at Camden Yards, that's where the Yankees go after this ball game for three night games, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Detroit in the eighth, beating the Orioles nine to four. The score holds up, and the Yankees ahead. Fastball gets Bernie right on the inside point. Bernie thought it was off the plate a little bit. That's the fourth strikeout for Stottlemyre. Nice job by Borders, maybe. On the nobody beats the Wiz out of town scoreboard, there's the score we just referred to. Game one, suspicion they might not get game two in with the bad weather. 9 4, Detroit in the eighth. Chicago 4 to 1, that's the first game in the seventh. They also were rained out. Chance that the Blue Jays, appears now, will have to head for Milwaukee, take all their Jerobims of champagne with them to celebrate there. Some more American League scores. I don't think that Paul Molitor would be particularly unhappy to see the Blue Jays clinch the East, the team that let him get away. In the seats, Olerud got it. These fans are so polite. Mattingly went in the stands yesterday. Try this in the Bronx or Flushing. John Olerud using that reach. That's what did it. Over and above a couple gloves and hands there with some youngsters. Pays to be 6'5", doesn't yep. it? Two down for Pat Kelly. He has popped out and struck out. Inside. Ball misses two and nothing. Pat hitting at 267 with those seven home runs and 49 runs batted in. This time he's got the guard on his left foot. He had a fastball down, pops it to short center field. Roberto Alomar. So Stalmar has settled in as you indicated, Dwayne. He's had some fairly easy innings to the fourth, fifth, and sixth. We're going to the bottom of the sixth. Yankees leading it six to one. The Tigers will finish the regular season coming to Yankee Stadium on Friday night, 7:30. Saturday and Sunday, 1:30 starts. Get your tickets, Yankee Stadium ticket window, Yankees Clubhouse stores, or Ticketmaster, 212-307-1212. Tigers have scored with their nine runs today, almost 50 runs more than the second place team in runs scored, and that is the Toronto Blue Jays. They have also given up 181 home runs. Devon White, Paul Molitor, and Joe Carter. White spent last season, the World's Championship season, hitting first with Alomar second. He's hitting second today with Alomar moving around against left-handers. Alomar goes to the sixth slot. Right-handers, he moves into the third slot. 
nothing in two to White. He's grounded out and single. Did he check? Noakes tags him. The appeal goes down to first base. Greg Koss pops up the right hand. There's one down. It's only the second strikeout for Abbott. He got ahead of White, finished him off with this pitch into the dirt. Generally speaking, this team does not strike out a lot, except for Joe Carter and Devon White, both of whom are over 100 strikeouts on the year. Paul Molitor is grounded to the left side twice. Boggs come in in case he tries to drop a bunt down with the Blue Jays trailing by five. Only Jays run, a leadoff home run by Carter in the second. Jim Larritz with a three-run home run for the Yankees in the first. There's that changeup going the other way. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. You can see Paul Molitor opens up looking for something to come in, so the change of speeds and the direction fools him. I thought this pitch, and he threw a, an off-speed curveball to Tony Fernandez in the fifth inning for strike two. It was a very good pitch. Trail Boggs has got it. When you add up the quality of at bats over a season for Paul Mauter, he has missed very few ball games. Mm -hmm. I mean, how bad in the American League you find nobody that has more quality at bats? He has been something. Every time we see him, he's on almost everything. Doesn't strike out much, uses the whole field, got a little power. Two outs for Joe Carter. He is two for two. Change up misses. Like Roger Maris in 61, Joe Carter does what he does and is supposed to do in the three or four slot. Roger at third, Carter, of course, fourth, produce runs. Roger's batting average wasn't that attractive, around 260, I guess. He drove in a lot of runs, hit the home runs, get your team on board, on the board early, and win some games late. And that's what Carter does. One and two now from Jim Abbott. It's amazing how good he's been year in and year out. Priority mail. There's Joe Carter for you, Jim, uh, Wayne. 890 runs batted in over the last eight seasons. Look at who he's competing with. Right up there with, with Hank Aaron. <laughs> that's incredible. What consistency, either league. One and two with two down. Two high, two balls, and two strikes. Game down in Camden Yards, now in the ninth, 9-4 Detroit. Dwayne and I had a chance to spend a little time uh, with Nick Labor, the third base coach for the Blue Jays, and I thought it was nice that we asked Nick, how's Rich Hacker doing? And he had some really promising things to say, didn't he? Yeah, he's spent some time talking with him on the phone, conversations as Rich tries to recall a lot of the players that he forgotten because of that accident. There's a fastball that looked like a tail away from Carter to strike him out. Third strikeout for Abbott will go to the seventh. Yankees leading it 6-1. New York Yankee baseball is brought to you in part by the American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Our ball game moves into the seventh inning from Toronto. And Huck Flinter, who was recalled from Knoxville, he was 13 and 6 there with an earned run average of 3.30. Flinter takes over for Todd Stottlemyre, who gave the Blue Jays 104 pitches in six innings, and that's pretty remarkable when you take into consideration that he made 40 pitches alone in the first inning. 
five hits, six runs, four strikeouts, six bases on balls, and a home run. And now Flinter on. The Yankees will send the top of the batting order Wade Boggs up there. The first pitch is high, ball one. One of the reasons they are short left-handers uh, out of that pen with lighter starting ins at times, but I think when he pitched that playoff game against Greenville, eight innings did so well, they figured he could handle the pressure up here. Wade Boggs out, Alomar to Olerud. Good year at the double A level. Flinter. And Dion James due to hit, but he'll be lifted in favor of Randy Velarde with the left hander in the game. And with the lead, getting late in the uh, ball game, you improve your defense in left field with Randy out there. A better throwing arm, more speed. Randy. Takes the pitch wide, ball one. Velarde was in the starting lineup last night before pitching change. Pal Leiter starting, I should say, yesterday, yesterday afternoon, and he went 0 for 2. Two balls, no strikes the count. Quick delivery, and he throws a little change up to Randy. He'd probably be a guy from just a few times we've seen him so far as uh, be sneaky quick. center Carter back on the track and it's going to be off the bottom of the wall gets away from Carter on the carom and Randy's on his way to third with a stand up triple the ball bounded off the bottom of the fence out there just out of the reach of Carter who managed to get a glove on the ball but could not come up with it we talked yesterday about how shallow Carter plays people to their off field and the right handed hitter cheat a little bit in but he also has such confidence in his ability to go back. He had a long run and then got a little too close to the padding and it got on by. So Randy needed no coach. He just saw the play in front of him and picked up an extra base. And Velarde picks up his second triple of the year. Don Mattingly up there with the infield in. And the pitch is a strike. Mattingly had a base hit and a run scored in the first inning. So he is one for three. Hitting 288 for the year. And despite the recent slide for Mattingly, he continues to be good with men in scoring position. Flinter knocks this one down. Mattingly is out. Flinter to Olerud, and Velarde remains at third base. Don has really, I think, put this in perspective as well as anybody. You know, talked a little bit to him before the ball game about. Well, the recent doldrums the Yankees are in, and he said, well, you know, you put in the entire season, where we came from, the entire season in perspective, how much we've progressed. Yeah, we we're unhappy that we're playing the way we have recently, losing a lot of ball games, falling out of it, but the fact remains he's enjoyed it, and the team should, for the progress they've made, and what they did for, what, five-plus months. That's right. Danny Tartable is going to receive an intentional walk. The only thing that the Yankees will add to that is that in the final week of the season, since they have made such great progress over five months, they'd like to end it on an upbeat note. Feel good about the way the season ended because for certainly five months of this season, it was one big positive for the Yankees, and they'd like to be able to take part of that feeling with them as they close out their regular season. Yeah, and some people have said, hey, look, uh, why don't you play the kids? Well, because second place is important. That's and right. as you said, finishing on a high note have a little be a little more comfortable in the offseason knowing there'll be more moves made well Matt Noakes will bat against the left hander Huck Flinner runners at first and third with two outs in the seventh the Yankees leading six to one fly ball center field Devon White is there waiting and the Yankees are out in the seventh no runs, one hit, two left, and we're headed into the Blue Jay half of inning seven, six to one Yankees. Let's check the Budweiser game recap. 
Yankees jumped out in front early. Noakes a base hit, driving home two in the first. Jimmy Larratt did a three-run homer. Carter led off the second with a home run. And in the third, Mike Gallego answered that with a sacrifice fly to make it six to one. So Jim Abbott still on the mound. Randy Velarde in the ball game now, taking over in left. Abbott will face John Olerud here to open the bottom of the seventh inning. Three strikeouts, no walks for Abbott. And Olerud sends the first one high and deep to left. Velarde back on the track, and he makes the catch. Well, does he have good off-field uh, power? That's why against left-handers, he doesn't give. He stays with it. He drives the ball the other way. And we've seen him the last, uh, well, this series, but the last couple games. On the GMC truck batting leaders board, Olerud there, when it comes to opposite field hits, tied for third with Boggs and Phillips topping that list. It allows you to wait a split, split second longer to recognize the pitch. And Roberto Alomar batting left-handed here against Jim Abbott in the first pitch as a ball. Didn't get scared off by the pitch over his head, did he? No. He's a great player. I guess you wouldn't expect it to be that way. One ball, one strike. Well, his father, Sandy Alomar, a lot of influence on him learning the game. And then he was a great fan of Joe Morgan and Pete Rose. He went to San Diego, learned a lot from Tony Gwynn. Strokes this one back into center field for Bernie Williams, who makes the catch. And another name that he'll mention when you talk hitting with him is Deacon Jones, who spent some time as the hitting coach out there. He's now a scout for the uh, Baltimore Orioles. We run into him periodically. And Alomar will always include him in those conversations. Here's Tony Fernandez. Guess who's catching uh, Jim Abbott again today? Matt Noakes, who Tell caught him. his no hitter. You got it. And another low hit, one run game. Fernandez single back in the second inning. He is one out of two. And a chop to short, charged by Mike Gallego, who throws him out. And a quick inning. One, two, three, seven for Abbott against Toronto. And at the end of seven, six to one Yanks. Scott Brow is the new pitcher making his fifth appearance for the Blue Jays. Oh, and one. He was up earlier this year and made a couple starts. Becomes the third pitcher of this game. One of three rookie pitchers here still on the roster for Cito Gaston. Jim Larritz will lead off the eighth against him. Such a big part of the year, this starting pitching struggled so they were searching all over the place and they couldn't pull the trigger on the deal. They're bringing kids up, some from the double A level. Larritz goes down the right side, foul with this one. Olerud over there and makes the catch. So Larritz makes the first out of the eighth, giving him one for four. His only hit a big one, a three-run homer in the first. Well, Detroit in the first game of that doubleheader, knocking off Baltimore, nine to four. So does that assure so, the Blue Jays of a tie? Yeah, the magic number is now one. Any way you look at it, for the Blue Jays, one to clinch it. Here's Bernie Williams. This one is foul out of play. One strike to count. Crowd of 50,518 today. And that gives the Blue Jays the American League single season attendance mark with 4,057,947. Just off the plate. One ball, one strike. So this is good experience for some of these kids for the Blue Jays to come up and get some time right now late in September face the big league hitters the Pat Gillick and his aides can evaluate them they get a taste of it chop back through the middle and a base hit into center for Bernie so Bernie's on for the second time in this game that's his first hit 
He had walked in the third. So the Yankees now have seven hits in this contest. The other side of the field, he gives Buck Schoen and his coaching staff a chance to look at some of these pitchers, evaluate them, check their stuff, check their release point to home plate, put it in their records. They were scouted so extensively in the minor leagues, but there's still just a few more things you can learn. Perhaps you learn as much about a guy's makeup as you do his uh, physical talent when you see him in big league action. How is he going to handle it? One on, one out. Brow out of the University of Washington. Throwing to a guy who was it? Rose Oldwood over at Washington State. Just pitch out here. Nothing doing. One ball to no strikes. It's fouled out to Olderud, and then Williams with the base hit. Hey Mike. Hey Mike, Come on, baby. The Yankees scoring most of it in the first when they put five on the board. Count is one and one now. On Mike Gallego. Mike drove in a run with a sacrifice fly to right in the third inning. He had walked as part of that. Big first, but was stranded on second base after swiping a bag and fouled out his last time up there. One one to count. One on, one out. This one running off the plate, down and away, two balls and a strike. Here comes your running count. He was busy yesterday with a couple of stolen bases. Bernie's not going, and the pitch is ball three. Now a better running count. One out. He's trying to win their second game of the year in this park. They're one and four in the Sky Dome. Let's see what Bernie does. He's going. And the pitch ground ball up the middle, but right there is Fernandez. He was going to cover. Boy, Fernandez on his way to cover the bag. Bernie got in there, but Fernandez still made the play at first to get Gallego. Fernandez runs right into this ball. A sinker ball to Gallego. He's sliding over. Bernie with the speed on the move. Tony cannot get the force. Does get Gallego. Sharply hit ball by Gallego. I don't know if there's a better glove in all of the major leagues unless it's Ozzie Smith than Tony Fernandez. I mean, his hands are so soft and so good and so quick. Thrown at times. Had given him problems when he had the shoulder and the elbow troubles. Pat Kelly. Kelly strokes one deep to left. Henderson back. That ball's going to be off the wall for extra bases. Bernie Williams scores, and Pat Kelly stops at second with a double. It's now a seven to one ball game. Pat Kelly driving in his 50th run of the year. Not too often we've seen this year where Buck Showalter's had the luxury of starting a fast runner like Bernie, preventing the double play, keeping the inning alive, and then you capitalize it with this double off the bat of Pat Kelly. Now they're going to walk Wade Boggs intentionally with the right-handed bat of Velarde do next. You know, it's kind of interesting to compare as we take another look at Kelly's double. The number nine hitters in these lineups. Yankees have gotten great production out of the bottom part of their order for a good part of the season. And with Pat Kelly just driving in his 50th run, Pat Borders, who's the number nine hitter for Toronto, hitting 253 to start the day with eight home runs and 53 runs batted in, 29 doubles, no triples. Pat Kelly started the day at 269 with seven home runs. He now has 50 runs batted in with 23 doubles and a triple. So some comparable numbers and pretty good production out of that ninth spot. And Pat Borders has had 
quite a few more at bats. 474 official to Pat Kelly's 387 yeah. official. So Pat Kelly's production has been pretty nice. So here's Randy Velarde taking the pitch high, ball one. And I think the tendency in Pat's case was for so many people to think of him in terms of a defensive player because he's such a good second baseman. But he's put up some offensive numbers for the Yankees this year. A strike call to Randy Velarde, and the count is one and one. Decent batting average for Pat, and he's hit some quite a few balls with authority. Into center field. White is there to make the catch, and the Yankees are out on the eighth. They add a run to their lead. They pick up two hits, leave two in the process. We'll go into the bottom of the eighth with the Yankees leading seven to one. Well, the fans here are acknowledging the Toronto Blue Jays. Detroit Ball Club knocking off Baltimore nine to four. Last regular season home game for Toronto and it might have been a little scarier if they hadn't had the big pad and had to go on the road and try and finish it. Although they've been a pretty good road team, the best road club in the American League. Here's the first pitch to Ed Sprague and it's low and outside for a ball. The only road team in the Eastern Division of American League with a winning record, ten over 500 on the road. Chicago White Sox 14 games above 500 on the road and that might serve them well in postseason play them three games played here in Toronto the young pitching staff holds up and if they pitch around Frank Thomas mm -hmm. make venture or George Bell you think it'll be some of George Bell coming back here MVP in a Blue Jays uniform yeah, there's a nice off speed pitch from Abbott to make the count one and two Gerald Williams is in the game and right field for the Yankees. There's Gerald. This pitch is upstairs. Two balls, two strikes. So the Blue Jays and the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth, seven to one. Final regular season home game of the year for Toronto. Three. Over the last few innings, Jim Abbott seems from here to be throwing some pitches that are tailing away. Not only that last fastball inning earlier, he threw in the tail away. Surprised some hitters with it. They keep opening up, looking for the ball to come into them. Foul ball. Tony Kloninger has not pushed Jim Abbott into learning that. He has really said, okay, you will do it in the bullpen. We'll do it in your work days. When you feel comfortable throwing it in game conditions, you do it. And I think we've seen more today than we have in the past. 3-2 is hit deep but foul. The Sprague taking the pitch, showing some of his power, but well foul. Yankee coaching staff still has not heard whether or not they will be back next year. Was it last year? They went to almost the last last series anyway yeah, before Boston they found it out. And the pitch starts down and in. So Ed Sprague draws the walk to open the bottom of the eighth inning. And this between innings here, Cito Gaston out. This is Fan Appreciation Day, final home game of the regular season. Cito Gaston acknowledging the great support here from the Blue Jay fans. How can anybody take shots at a guy who's managed five years and won four division championships? Yep. I mean, it's incredible what what newspaper critics and the, what fans and talk shows want. Oh boy! There's a long shot deep left off the bat of Borders, and that ball is gone. Pat Borders hitting his ninth home run to make it seven to three. He'd gone the opposite field twice on Jim Abbott. Fly to right field in the third and the fifth. And listen, he turns out on the inside part of the plate. So a 
as the Yankees in the top half of this inning got an RBI double out of their ninth place hitter. Here's Porter's, the Blue Jays' ninth place hitter, belting his ninth home run to make it a four-run ball game. Seven to three, the second home run of the day hit by Toronto off Jim Abbott. And Tony Collinger's on his way to the mound. I couldn't tell if that was a curveball or a slider. It's really a moot point because it just stayed right in the middle of the plate instead of really coming in hard on Pat Porter's on the corner or off the plate. So Tony making his point with Abbott. Notes out there as well. How about when's the last time you saw that after very emotional discussion the other one's about as Tony Connier left Jim Abbott tapped him on the shoulders of the scene. He is the most gentlemanly person I've ever seen Jim Abbott. Yeah, he really is, is outstanding. You should tell the story when you uh, he did the thing for you after the no hitter. Oh he's amazing. That's it, great. It, this is absolutely incredible. An unbelievable exchange. Ricky Henderson set to step in. He threw that no hitter and I talked with him the day after about that. Henderson nothing out of three takes one too low ball one and I'd had the fortune to do two other no hitters and I picked up photos action photos from those games and had those two pitchers Kenny Forge and Nolan Ryan sign them this one down two balls no strikes and so the day after Jim's no hitter I ask him if He'd do that for me if I got a photo and you'd expect somebody to say oh sure no problem. There's a strike on the inside corner and in Jim's case he, he said really he said, you want to put that on your wall he says he says I'm honored he says I really appreciate that I said wait there's something wrong with this exchange here. He is so genuine. Three balls and a strike to count. A walk and a home run. Blue Jays were still another inning after this to get their power in as Munoz and Asenmacher begin to throw for Buck Showalter. The 3-1 to Henderson. And ball four is too high. Ricky Henderson gets more high pitches with that crowd than anybody you know of. And when he wants to come out of the crowd and crush it, he can do that too. And he gets it both ways. Take a look at this 3-1 oh, pitch. This, this didn't look like a strike. Look at Ricky. Matt you know, Oaks does drag it down about six inches, yeah. which when an umpire sees that, he might say, hey, what are you pulling it in for? Yeah. Again, it's right at the belt area. Abbott hadn't walked anybody until this inning. He's given up two sandwiched around the home run by Pat Borders. And now Devon White steps in with nobody out. White is one out of three. We have seen the Yankees be a, a late inning ball club a lot at home this season. Well, Toronto's capable of it also. Trouble. And a chop. Mattingly comes back and oh, man, beats White to the bag. Mattingly scrambling and diving in at the bag to get the out. Some effort by Don Mattingly on that chop as Henderson moves into second base. Devon White with that great speed really put the pressure on Mattingly. He is holding Henderson on, and as soon as Don turned around, he saw that Jim Abbott wasn't going to get there. Wow. He makes at least one outstanding play every ball game. C.S. Cannon, great teamwork play of the game by Don Mattingly on that chop off the bat of Devon White. Now Buck Showalter out of the Yankee dugout with Paul Molitor due. And that's going to be it for Jim Abbott. Well, that may have been the conversation with Tony Connick. Can you get us one more hitter? The switch hitter White, who's got weaker numbers from the right than left side, and Mattingly got Devon White for Abbott. Jim Abbott departs working seven and a third innings. He gives up six hits and the call goes to Bobby Munoz. Three runs charged to Abbott. He's responsible for Henderson at second base. And this call to the bullpen is brought to you by NEC Business Communications. Catch the NEC advantage at your local NEC dealer. 
wonder how easy it is to get on the Yankees winter mailing list for the 94 group season and individual game ticket information. Just send a postcard with your name, address, daytime, and evening phone numbers to Yankees mailing list, Yankee Stadium, Bronx, New York, 10451. Bobby Munoz on for the 35th time, two and three with a 5.05 ERA. He faces Paul Molitor with Ricky Henderson on second base and one out. He throws Molitor some heat to start him, strike one. And Dwayne Munoz has been throwing the baseball with so much more confidence since being recalled. Her ball's been better. He's retired 17 of the last 22 batters he's faced. Christmas to his fastball, and he's not just a fastball slider ball, he's fastball slider and curve. One ball, one strike. Munoz pitched here Friday. And having got innings. third. Yeah. Got the middle part of the order. And having confidence in him and allows in this situation Buck Scholler not going to Lee Smith as closer with just one out in the eighth. See if Munoz could get him through this, and I'm assuming that in the ninth, it'll be Big Lee. The 1-1. One, one. Strike two. That's a dandy pitch. Oh, he had a good spot when you saw him throw the fastball to Milder that he was a little bit late on earlier in this count. He's geared up to pull the trigger, and he just can't. Great spot, great action. Wow. Trip to the minors didn't hurt him. Shook him up a little bit, regained some confidence, came up a little more determined. And Henderson off second, and the pitch is grounded foul down past Nick Leva. And what he's done also, and Tony Clowney has helped him, and also Mike Brown at the minor league level. He now can throw a sinker when he wants to, as he just did, and could also ride the fastball. He'd gotten in some habits where almost everything was sinking. One direction kind of fastball. You think of Tony Clark having to work with Hutton and Munoz and John and Hitchcock and Whitman, all of whom are extremely young in Major League Service. He's done a good job. The one two again and a fly ball into left. Velarde is there setting up to make the catch for the out. Breaking ball that Milder did not have a good swing at. That's two gone. Well, that curveball allows him that extra speed. The fastball slider, basically the same speed. The curveball gives him a different look. He's off on the end of the bat. You can see the left tip fly out first. He's got nothing left to drive it. And I tell you, that's a pretty good test right there with Molitor, who stays back and is oh, yeah. as efficient with his approach to hitting as any hitter maybe in the league right now. And he had him out in front. Stride a bit. Here's Joe Carter with a pop down the right side. Gerald Williams on the run. Mattingly out there, and Mattingly makes a fine running catch in foul territory with his back to the infield. Mattingly turns in two fine plays in the eighth as the Blue Jays pick up two runs. And at the end of eight, the score Yankees seven, Toronto three. In the summer of 1994, Americans will witness a spectacular exhibition of diving. The 1994 World Cup, brought to you in part by JVC. How would you like to drive a new car carefree and virtually cost-free and make no payments? You can at Bright Bay Lincoln Mercury GMC truck with a half-price carefree alternative. Why pay full price when you can drive away a new Lincoln Town car for only $11,999, a new Mercury Sable for only $69.95, or a new GMC Jimmy for only $89.95? The half-price carefree alternative, exclusively at Bright Bay Lincoln Mercury GMC truck, Sunrise Highway, Bayshore. It's here. It's now. It's Mazda's Grand Slam sales event. And you're the Sky Dome. Remember now, when you're having good times with good friends, drink responsibly because friends know when to say when. A reminder from your friends at Budweiser. Another pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. Woody Williams takes over following Stottlemyre, Flinter, and Brow. Yankees picked up six off Stottlemyre and one off Brow. And another rookie, three consecutively, take the mound for the Blue Jays. On 
Mattingly leads off, and the first pitch is way wide, ball one. Williams has pitched six times against the Yankees. A sinker ball. We've seen a lot of sliders from him. Mattingly fouls this one. And he was sent down to Dunedin on August 30th. One of those bookkeeping moves when they started setting their playoff rosters, postseason rosters. They like him. He throws strikes. Tries to keep the ball down. Mattingly pops it up on the left side. Fernandez makes the catch for the out. So Don, who singled and scored in the first, is the first out here in the ninth. That gives him one for five. Now Danny Tartable. Yeah, this season going to chip away a few more points off Don Mattingly's lifetime 300 average in the major leagues. takes one inside a fastball ball one Donnie started this game hitting 287 he was over 300 for such a stretch until this last month this one is foul out of play and he's hit for about the last 30 games now right around 200 with Nary a bellyache at all with some of the injuries he's tried to play through. Yep. Whether it's the wrist, whether it's the back, he won't tell you. But you know it's there. Two balls and a strike. Don started this year with a career average of 311. Two balls, two strikes the count. Is there like a mist or fog in here now? Is that me? No. Something I, seeping in? Yeah, the weather there's, change? There's something wrong with you, Tony. I didn't want to say anything. Oh, wait, in the, yeah, the I'm eyes saying, are I, gone. Well, somebody just tells us no, that there is from haze. the fireworks when they shot them off and yeah. they came out, it's like the smoke, I guess, that's still gathered here. Okay. Three balls and two strikes to count. <laughs> You're a little worried there for a yes. while. <laughs> <laughs> I was at a ball game in the old ballpark when Kelly Gruber was here with the bases loaded. He had a ball up into the fog. Nobody saw it. It was a grand slam inside the park, and they started calling him a foggy after that. <laughs> uh -huh. Fog came in out of off Lake Ontario. There's a pitch inside for ball four. Eight walks issued by Toronto pitching in this game. So Williams walks Tartable. Who's had a good day? Three walks, a line drive out to third, hit the ball hard. I mean, Danny's been in such a prolonged slump also, along with Don Matting, the three four spots just haven't produced the runs. These are your highest paid guys that you expect to pull you up offensively, but it just wasn't so this year for the Yankees. Here's Matt Noakes. Pitch is too high for a ball. I don't know. We mentioned so much about you know, the possibility of Mattingly's injuries affect them. I, I don't know if it does at all, and I've never asked Danny whether that shoulder that prevents mm -hmm. him from throwing. We saw him the other day come in the first game here, and he just lobbed the ball toward home plate. If that affects him, swinging it very well could. There's a tendency because da, uh, because Tartable has missed so many ball games with a variety of injuries over the last few years. He's had difficulty breaking the cycle. Say, oh well, it's just Danny. Well, we don't know that. And yep. uh, he's played and played hard every time we've seen him. He runs the bases hard. So again, you get a tag hang on, I hung on you, and it, it seems lasting, and sometimes it's unfair. It might very well be in this case with Tartable. He has fit very well in the mix of this ball club this year. He's at first base with a walk. You know, he now has 88 bases on balls with these three walks today. Mm -hmm. Two balls and a strike. He's going to Camden Yards, too. Remember last year, the series he had there? He was Whoa. going for the Lazari record, and Buck Shaw was unaware, so he took him out the last of Pat <laughs> in that big ball game he had there. Three and one to count to Matt Noakes. It's hard to believe this Toronto ball club, and they weren't too many years into their expansion season that they had a 10 home run ball game in the old ballpark, which is a major league record for a game for a team. The prior record was eight. Have a pretty good ballpark to hit him with the wind blowing out short right field. Back to back walks by Williams. Well, he's walked Tarnable and now Noakes. Gerald Williams is going to be the hitter. And this is getting this 
disgusting. Another last second field oh. goal. Nobody beats the Wiz from the NFL. Minnesota 15, Green Bay 13. Back to back ball games. Reggie White didn't block the <laughs> late second field goal. No, he's played well for the Packers. With two men on and one out, Gerald Williams is the hitter. Heading 167, borders out, and now here comes Galen Sisko on his way to the mound. Williams has walked two hitters after he got Mattingly on the pop to the shortstop. Mark Icorn. I think Galen went out really because uh, he wanted to explain to Woody Williams about the signs and everything else. I don't know what it was. If Borders was going out there because he was ticked because of consecutive walks. Pat will do that. Early on in his career, he wasn't communicating well. He said, you got to go out there and take charge. And uh, Maybe that's what he was trying to do, and uh, Galen went out and said, I'll handle this. Gerald goes after this one and fouls it back and out of play for a strike. Williams entered the game to play right field in the eighth inning. Jim Larratt started the day out there. coaching box. Wait <laughs> pops up for the stare for Gerald Williams down there. You think son Brett and wife Terry are going to have some fun with that after oh. the game? <laughs> Here in the What's ballpark today. Oh. Hmm. He used to have the... <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, he's got that bad wheel to begin with. That was a seven. <laughs> On the Richter <laughs> scale and for his dive. <laughs> a little half gainer. <laughs> Look out. Oh, got him. I got him. Gerald Williams hit by that pitch, and that's going to load the bases. He, he never tried to get out of the way. He's going out after something and just dives right into the ball. Watch Gerald. This goes right into it. Now, I've often wondered, as we see from Skycam, why, why somebody early in Gerald Williams' career with the Yankees didn't say to him, son, you just cannot hit like that with that high leg kick. And with that severe uppercut, and yet he's now, I think he'll play 27 28 next year, wherever he's going to be. And still, when he does hit it, he gets the ball so high in the air, everything's got to be so perfect for him to square on the ball. Here's Bernie Williams. Fouls this one away for a strike. Well, Gerald Williams, this past August, turned 27. It's the time in a guy's career, and the Yankees uh, have a lot of their quote unquote kids that come up in their mid 20s when they should be starting the prime of mm -hmm. their major league career, and you then stop being a prospect. If you want to trade something, get value in return, you say, well, he's getting up in age now. If he hadn't progressed to this age, we don't want to take a chance on him. If he could make your ball club. This one. Breaking down and in from Williams to Williams. One ball, one strike. Two walks and a hit batsman. The bases are loaded. Now Bernie Williams is behind in the count of all two strikes. See Bernie with a walk and a single. There's a run scored. And is out on strikes. He tried to check. Thought he had, but he has a parting word for Al Clark. Pass ball for call strike. Number two on the inside corner, then a slider beneath his fist. And uh, Bernie's just simply to move off the plate with the stride into home plate. Look at his front foot, how close it is to home plate. A matter of eight inches. Well, you, they call it hitting across your body, like throwing it across your body. If you're going to hit it hard, you're going to have to pull it foul, hitting it across your body that way. Two outs, bases remain loaded. Here's Mike Gallego. He 
It's one the other way, and that's going to be out of play. Strike one. Gallego drove in a run with a sacrifice fly to right in the third. Hitting 290 for the year. Facing Woody Williams. Williams spent some time at the University of Houston. Played shortstop there. Pitching coaches will tell you shortstops have the perfect delivery. George Bamber used to, and we saw Billy Connors do it too. Well, he did the shortstop pitchers the right. go out sure. and make that throw from but shortstop. Bamber would say, get a pitcher on the side, and he'd say, uh, you haven't told your mechanics. He's just sit here on the bench and watch Mark Belanger take infield practice. Ground balls to second for Alomar. Back to Olerud to retire the side. The Yankees get nothing out of that. Two walks to hit batsman, and they leave the bases loaded. So we'll go into the bottom of the ninth. 7-3 Yankees. The New York Rangers are back this week with three preseason games, saying no retreat, no surrender. Tomorrow, 7.30, the Islanders and the Rangers. Then Wednesday at 7.30, Rangers take on the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Friday at 7.30 against the New Jersey Devils. Tickets still available at the Garden Box office and through Ticketmaster outlets. You read it just like General George Custer wrote it. <laughs> well, here we go. Paul Ausenmacher into the bottom of the ninth. Ausenmacher. With Olerud, the left-handed batter, and then Alomar, the switch hitter, due to follow. I'd have brought my closer right now. If he's your closer, he's your closer. You know, it's two switch hitters after Olerud. The first batter that uh, Ossenmacher faced was Olerud. He got in. The next time he faced Olerud, Olerud got Ossenmacher. And Ossenmacher throws him a strike on the inside corner. Olerud at the moment hitting 363. Two and two on the year, 352 earned run average. One ball, one strike. John Olden was asked almost throughout his quest for fun, and he stuck with it a long time about the pressures. And he, time and time again, said he didn't feel a whole lot of pressure. And for a kid who had the brain aneurysm and was just about on his deathbed, he's been through much more. Look out. Oh, folks. Velarde almost misplayed that ball. It almost got away from him, but he made. The last second adjustment to reach up and make the grab. You don't see too many young left hand hitters understand how to hit against left handed pitching like Olu does. Just takes that breaking ball in a good spot and drives it hard again to the opposite field. And Randy recovers again. Well, Olerud is the first out, gives him 0 for 4. Here's Roberto Alomar to bounce her down to third. Wade Boggs across to Mattingly. So two up, two down. Olerud with the fly ball to left and Alomar on the first pitch. Goes out third to first. Here's Tony Fernandez. So Ossenmacher getting the first two outs quickly. Faces Fernandez. Throws a fastball for a strike. Smith's ready if a base runner gets on, then he got Sprague and Borders, so we might see him then. We'll be back. Buck has been extremely quiet, hasn't he? Yep. His well. responses in the press conferences have been uh, monosyllabic many times and not really as effusive as he was. Just a couple of weeks ago, he he's, he's really after. felt beleaguered. Almost uh, the other day, uh, if, uh, you're a boxer who's been battling this great opponent, and you're in the corner, kind of looking toward the referee every once in a while, and throwing a punch back or two yourself. Well, he's taken these losses in the last couple of weeks and falling out of it so quickly, much too personally. You hope this will be a learning experience for him that. You don't personalize them. You don't personalize them. If you win a bunch, you know, it's the players who win. But it's always been that way. In every level, I don't care if it's back in Little League, the players win and the coaches or managers lose. Yeah. That's just the way the system is. It's unfortunate, but uh, Cino Gaston's responses were saying, hey, look, 
So we get paid for it, and that's uh, the way it is. Ground ball to first. Mattingly will take care of this one, and this one is over. So the Yankees have beaten the Blue Jays 7 to 3. 1 2 3 go the Blue Jays in the ninth. As Paul Ossenmacher closes it out, the Yankees avoid being swept and defeat the Blue Jays. Well, the Yankees, their 84th victory of the year. And the Blue Jays must wait for their celebration. 7 3 the final. The Baltimore Orioles were beaten in the first game by Detroit, 9 4, and the Yankees have knocked off the Blue Jays here, 7 3. So the standings break down this way at the moment in the Eastern Division. The Yankees six and a half back in second place. A game up on Baltimore and the Orioles have game two of their doubleheader to complete today. Now nice outing by Jim Abbott Dwayne. He pitched a very strong ball game. Jim Larritz who was inserted in the lineup very late because of O'Neill's elbow hits a three run home run when Todd Stottlemyre did not have his control. So they will not celebrate here. 7-3 the final. The Yankees over Toronto. The Yankees win the final game of this three-game series and we'll return following this.